Paramount Pictures do this to me? Putting a false copyright claim on my Noah vlog? I mean, seriously. I never put video clips from any of the movies that I talk about on my blog show. <sighs> Still, whatever happens, I pray that this problem gets resolved by the end of the month. Otherwise, the video might get struck, like what happened with my Cursed Princess Ivy blog back in 2014. Hmm. Seems I'm late again. I gotta get this episode started. Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince. Welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Well, folks, it's time to take another trip to Jurassic World. If you may recall, during March of 2017, I blogged the first Jurassic World movie with some help from my friend, Lake Copeland. While we did praise this movie for being amazing, intense, and nostalgic, our blog had a few flaws in it, mostly with Lake's lack of reading. No offense, Lake, if you're watching this. Anyway, when 2018 was about to start, I was deeply thrilled when I heard a sequel was going to be released this year. But about two months ago, I heard on Facebook that the Jurassic Park ride at Universal Studios is going to turn into a Jurassic World ride starting this September until sometime in 2019. My thoughts on this idea? Well, I am kind of disappointed since my first time going on this ride was back in fall 2014 and I went on the Floridian version during December 2016. So, in a way, I'm new with this kind of ride. But, on the other hand, as long as the new Jurassic World ride is still wet and thrilling, then I'll be cool with it. Anyway, let's get started on the new Jurassic World movie and see if it holds a candle to the last movie. Released on June 22nd, 2018, the movie is Jurassic World 2 Fallen Kingdom. Now let's get started. Three years after the destruction of the Jurassic World theme park, Owen Grady and Claire Deering return to the island of Isla Nublar to save the remaining dinosaurs from a volcano that's about to erupt. They soon encounter terrifying new breeds of gigantic dinosaurs while uncovering a conspiracy that threatens the entire planet. So, what are my thoughts on this new, new movie? Well, it was pretty good, quite thrilling, though not as much a masterpiece as the last movie. But, let's move on to Mustang Notes. On July 23rd, 2015, Universal Studios announced that a fifth movie had been scheduled for a June 22nd, 2018 release date in the U.S. It was also announced that Trevoro would write the script with his writing partner, Derek Connolly, as they did for Jurassic World, that the film would be produced by Frank Marshall, and that Steven Spielberg and Trevoro would act as executive producers. At the time of the film's announcement, Trevoro said that the series isn't always going to be, well, limited to theme parks, and confirmed that the film would not involve a bunch of dinosaurs chasing people on the island. That'll get old really fast. Trevorrow also spoke of the film's possible opening source storyline. It's almost like InGen's 
is Mac. But what if PC gets their hands on it? What if there are 15 different entities around the world who can make a dinosaur? By October 2015, director J.A. Bayona, hope I'm pronouncing that right, was being considered to direct the movie, although he chose instead to direct the World War Z sequel, a project to which he had already signed on. In January 2016, it was reported that Bayona could still be a candidate to direct the movie after he left the World War Z sequel. In August 2015, Howard said that the script was being written, and it was announced that the movie would be released in the UK two weeks early on June 7, 2018. Filming took place from February to July 2017 in the United Kingdom and Hawaii. Now, some of the reasons why I think this movie is good is because, like the first Jurassic World movie, there are parts in this movie that are very reminiscent to Jurassic Park. Plus, there are a lot of epic and intense sequences, like the volcano eruption and several carnivorous dinosaur attacks. However, there are a few things in this movie that I should nitpick about. First is the whole political slash environmental scene that happens at the beginning of the movie, and the plot feels kind of familiar. It feels almost like the Planet of the Apes trilogy, with a bit of Cloudy and the Chance of Meatballs too. But one of the positive things I can say about this film is that I do like the many different species of dinosaurs featured in this movie. Like the Brontosauruses, the Triceratops, even the famous T-Rex. Also, in my opinion, Blue, the Velociraptor, has an important role in this movie. For example, she's the only living Velociraptor, and I think she's very smart. Now let's talk about the new dinosaur in this franchise, the Indoraptor. This dinosaur bears an eerie but strikingly similar appearance of the Indominus Rex but with a few differences, like its size, color, toe, and toe claws. In the movie, the Indoraptor was created in a hidden laboratory in the Lockwood Manor. It was another one of Dr. Henry Wu's creations, similar to the Indominus Rex itself. It was a prototype as Wu was waiting to obtain Blue's blood to finalize the genome of the creature and breed a more streamlined version of it. It was created to be a weapon and was shown to attack on command through the use of visual and audio frequency, which would drive it into a frenzied state. Anyway, now that we're done with Mustang notes, Let's move on to the cast. Let's start with Claire Deering, once again played by Bryce Dallas Howard, who got to be in the 2016 Pete's Dragon movie. Claire is Jurassic World's former operations manager. In this movie, she's now a dinosaur rights activist who has founded the Dinosaur Protection Group to save the surviving dinosaurs on Ila Nublar. In my opinion, even though her nephews are absent in this movie, Claire is a brave character and she knows the dinosaurs more than any character in these recent movies. Next we have Owen Grady, once again played by Chris Pratt, who got to be in Passengers 
and Guardians of the Galaxy. Owen is a Navy veteran and former Velociraptor trainer for Jurassic World. To me, his bond with Blue is very strong, and I think Owen is still a badass and daring character. Plus, he was really clever to manipulate a uh, Stig Stigimolach, I hope I'm pronouncing that, in order to break their cells open by charging at it. And I think it was also a close call when Owen nearly got burned by lava. Next we have Sir Benjamin Lockwood, played by James Cromwell, who got to be in Babe, Spirit Sally of the Cimarron, and Big Hero 6. Lockwood was John Hammond's former partner in developing the technology to clone dinosaurs. To me, I think Lockwood's mansion looks very great, and I like the different dinosaur displays featured below. Also, in the movie, Lockwood is shown to be, well, sick, and he's very protective of his granddaughter. Speaking of which, next is Maisie Lockwood, played by new actress Isabella Sermon. To me, Maisie is a shy, but intelligent and brave child who loves dinosaurs. And I think Isabella did great for her first role. Also, I think Maisie is a really adorable character. However, the reason why she isn't allowed to know any secrets of her mother or see any photos of her is because her grandfather, Benjamin Lockwood, secretly cloned his daughter after she died. Next we have our main villain, Eli Mills, played by Rafe Spall, who got to be in Steven Spielberg's The BFG Movie. Now, in this movie, Eli recruits Owen and Claire to rescue the dinosaurs from Ila Nublar. Speaking of his character's actions over the course of the movie, Spall noted that ambition is such a powerful emotion. You can get wrapped up in it and end up doing things in order to succeed. This character believes he's doing something right. He has been entrusted with pushing Lockwood's fortune into the future and making it survive after he dies. Mills feels he is simply doing what he's asked to do. However, in my opinion, Eli Mills is pretty much an insane guy who's such a money-grubbing asshole. Forgive my language, by the way. Finally, we have Dr. Ian Malcolm, once again played by Jeff Goldblum, best known from The Prince of Egypt and the Independence Day films, and Dr. Henry Wu, played by B.D. Wong, who got to be in Disney Mulan and played Linus in the stage version of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Jurassic World 2 Fallen Kingdom was good and thrilling, but it wasn't as good a movie as the first Jurassic World movie. And while the story was a tad familiar, it was way better than Jurassic Park 3. The characters like Claire and Owen make a great team, Blue is a badass dinosaur, Maisie is a very sympathetic character, and the villain, Eli Mills, is really insane. Also, there are several scenes that are really intense, like the eruption on Ila Nublar and the Indoraptor, which is a very ferocious mutant dinosaur. Though, it doesn't really top the Indominus Rex, in my opinion. 
I give this movie an 81% out of 100. But, if you think Jurassic World is over yet, think again. Because the next Jurassic World movie will be coming back to the big screen on June 11th, 2021. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me for my next blog, Mustang Power. Oh, and uh, happy Independence Day, everyone. Next year's blog will be more festive, I hope.